Hello everybody, I'm going to continue on with the videos. In this video we're looking at, we're going to mill down two stages. We're going to work on the milling machine today. We're going to mill the top section off, five mil off the top of this, of our cylinder head. I'm going to bore a hole in here, matching that part. Then we'll continue on, and we're going to machine the slots here in the slides. So look at that in, in, on our drawing. We've got a list of tools we're going to need from the store. We're going to get to the store. So first of all, we're going to need a 20 mil end mill. The red finder, spot drill, 16 slot drill, drill that down to 16 hole. That's step one. We've got machined and the hole drilled, then we'll flip it over on its edge and we'll machine the slots in on the side here. And those slots are to fit in the brackets, the links. So they're a crucial part and need to be drilled and manufactured very precisely. So the slot in here is set, the set depth of that slot is 4mm deep and the distance in is 20mm. So that matches the bracket which is spots in and it's very neat when it's done well. It looks very, very well. So to start off, we're going to look at the drawing first and then talk about getting set up on the new machine to use it. So in the drawing, we see our, on the page of the drawing, that's our cylinder head. And we can see here, it is diameter 40, diameter 40, and we're going to make the distance end, we're going to make five minutes off the top of it. And then the location for the hole for the downer 16 is up 18 millimeters and it's crucial to remember that the distance of 18 is from the side which has been drilled. So if we look at that in detail, just a very clear, take your time when doing this part. You're removing five millimeters off the top surface. So you're gonna machine away here five millimeters. Yeah, and then we're also going to do is just watch for is we're drilling the hole on top and the location from that hole is from the side which the valve enters. So the location for drilling the hole is looking in at this location from this face in and the distance in for that flat surface from this side in is 18 millimeters. So you can clearly see on the drawing that it's 18 millimeters at the center of that hole. So from here into the center of the hole is 18. I'm actually the drawing above. And we're machined five millimeters off the top surface. Okay, let's have a go now and let's start machining this part. So this is a milling machine. It's a virtual milling machine. And we refer to the other video on the different parts of the milling machine and how to keep the safe operation and use of it. So just as a recap of our safety guard, unless the guard is closed, then we get no power to the machine. You can power the machine on, and you've got an isolator switch here. So, to power the machine on for the first time, the light comes on, telling me the guard is closed. And what we want to do is install our first cutter into the machine, is what's known as a 20 mm end mill. So, we've got four cutting teeth, one, two, three, four, and we're checking that there's no damage to those teeth by any stage. So, what we're going to do now is making sure that the you're coming to one side of the vise and the locks are open when you're moving the bed of the machine. So we're winding from one side, bring the cutter up, push the tool up into the machine, and press the white button to go up. As it draws up, the cutter's in position, and to remove the tool out again, it's the black button. Making sure that the quill is not down, because if the quill is down, you'll hear this noise. So the quill lock needs to be opened, fully handle fully up, in order to put the tool into the machine, in and out. So it's fully up inside, and you're pushing the tool. That's a 20 mm mill into, it, into its already collet. Pushing it up inside, and literally then, as you rotate it around, it pushes up, white button put it in. Now, onto the piece of aluminium we have. How we're to position this in the chuck, it's going to need a centre square. So you get your centre square, and you're going to draw a line through the part, through the centre of the part. And if you continue that line down the sides, and you're going to decide now at this stage at which side you're going to cut off the 5mm. So we're going to remove 5mm off this side here. So this 5mm is going to come off that height. That material there is going to be machined away from the top of the part. We're going to remove off the top surface. 
which will have us looking like look like that. And then on the opposite side that we're putting the valve in, down here, along there, we're going to machine two slots, one there and one over here. And the depth that we're going in with those slots is going to be in four millimeters. Down four millimeters. So let's position the part in the chuck for the first time and why we made those lines is we're going to need to use parallels. So these parallels allow us to keep the part perpendicular to the cutter. So what you're going to do is get a set of parallels that match up and we're going to, you can get various different thickness and heights in the parallels and what we're doing is we're building up these to allow when you put the part in the chuck you want to ensure that it's not raised above those two lines you've made the width of the part and that has to be inside the vise so the width of the part must be below the jaws of the vise not raised above off it so ensure it's, that it's down into the vise and then using a separate parallel to keep you lined up over the edge of the piece like so so you tighten up your vise And then to ensure that it's in the firm the part is put in securely, just give a gentle tap down onto the part and then onto the handle of the vise so it's held in firm. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to touch the top of this tool here, the bottom of this tool, off the top of that surface to find Z. And we want to remove off the top of this, we're going to cut off the five millimeters off the top surface. So to do that very accurately is it the next set of machine to be able to use the little machine is we're going to get used to doing that. You're going to wind over. So these are the locks on the bed of the machine. As I said, refer to the, to the other video on using the machine for the first time. So you're going to wind over. This is the Y axis we're moving at the moment. I'm going to bring the tool then over to the top surface. So ensure you're able to use the machine safely and operate all axes before you start to operate it. If you have any questions, just ask your lecturer or member of staff for help. So again, just starting off, I want to ensure here that I have the correct height difference. So what we're going to have to do is, as the guard closes, it's getting close to the vise. So we're going to lower down the quill down on closer to the part. Bring it within range, just above the surface. And ensuring then that I have at least a five millimeter travel in the heights here on the part above. So then moving over here to the quill, this is the knee dial of the machine. So the bed, the vice sitting on the bed, sitting on the saddle, and this is called the knee of the machine. So this, you open this neural wheel and you're making sure that this is free to rotate around the knee dial. We need to set that to zero in a few minutes. So now, unlike the lathe, you set, you set this, the RPM on the machine when the machine is running. So calculate the speed beforehand, your downer 20 drill bit, and calculate the correct speed for that drill bit according to following your process plan. So as you're following your process plan at all stages in the project, on each step. Here we're looking at mounting in the milling machine, zeroing in the milling machine, and the RPM we're traveling today is at 1800 RPM. So we're going to go at 1800 RPM, but at the diameter 20 drill bit. So now moving out, turning on machine for the first time, ensuring that your cutter is going to the correct orientation, powering on the cutter, and then adjust your speed, and if you're in the high position, this is the low, here is it is in the high position, you then adjust according to that little indicator up to speed of 1800. So that's the 1800 RPM, 1830 is as close as I can get to it. And now what we're going to do is, we're going to bring the tool up to the part, nice and slowly raising up the bed just till it catches the top surface. So it's just catching the top surface there now. We're just starting to cut, so just at the point, we're going to zero the dial. 
he's raised the bed up just as it, as it touches the top of the part, just as it catches the material. And now it's just the catching of the material. What we're going to do now is we're going to move to one side. So I'm going to power on the automatic feed, and that sends power here to the controller for the automatic feed on the X axis. So I'm going to move the machine, ensure my locks are open. I'm going to machine out to one side of the part. And you can adjust the varying speed here as you're travelling on the, on the part. Now, we're going to try and machine this in the least amount of passes. So the diameter of the bar is 20, is 40, and we've got a twin end of it. So you should be able to do this in two passes. We're going to move to one side, and then we're going to adjust to take off five moves in total. So on the knee dial, as you come back here, that's at zero. And according to the mill machine that you have, if you're using this first, you'll have on your DRO, we also have the Z axis. Not all mill machines have this feature, but this one does. So I can zero the Z, which means I'm zeroing the point of the Z of the bed of the machine. So as I raise up the bed now, two and a half millimeters, but one full turn of the knee dial, that's two and a half millimeters. So each increment is 0 0.02. And we can see there in the camera. So one full turn is two and a half millimeters, zero to zero. And then each increment between is 0 0.02, which is 20 microns, the same as your vernier calipers. So now we're going to machine down across the park to remove two and a half mil off the top surface. So with that then, carrying on on my feet again, and then moving to the left hand side. We're starting to machine down along. I'm going to leave off the coolant so for video purposes so you can see what's happening. So as you go past the park, you just stop the lever and then you adjust in the width of the tool, which is 20, to get all the material taken off of that same, making sure it's nice and level. Back up. So as the corner rotates clockwise and the feed is going against it, it's up milling. The cutter is going in the opposite direction, with the direction of the feed, it's down with it. So now we've taken off two millimeters off the top. Just going to stop the show. We've now removed two millimeters, 2.5 millimeters off the top, and we've got two and a half millimeters to go to take off the total five millimeters. So again, we're going to adjust in here out to one side, and we're going to go one full, another full revolution back to zero again which gives us in total 5 mil. Now if we look up there at our DRO, we should see that same 5 appearing on our DRO, just to adjust it. So this is far more accurate. I see that this is, this is done by your eye, and using the DRO above. So that's slightly out there, we can tell. It needs to be on, on calibration. So now powering the machine up. Ensuring that the light is on for the automatic feed. And now you're gonna travel down along again. On our part. And then back moving over to capture all the far side. We're trying to ensure that we've got no trailing edge over the edge here. if you need to. If I stop the machine, check. We can see we want to clean up this edge just along here to remove the burrs. I'm going to bring the cutter over now just to clean up that side. So powering on the machine again and we're going to travel down over that edge to ensure we've got no burrs left. So in total that's our five numbers taken off the top surface. So now we're down to the finished height of the part. And we're nice and level as we're kind of sitting on the power levels. So the next stage of this video now will be to accurately drill the stop machine.
what I did, we're going to remove out the 20 mm mill. We're now finished with that, and we're going to place it out and pop in our edge finder. So to remove the, remove the tool safety-wise, bring the tool away from the edge of the part, ensuring your hand can fit in, and then bring the quill, open the quill, move the handle lever up, lock it, and press the black button to the tool down. Get the tool out. Now, the edge finder can fit into the Ori collet. Also, but as, as a, to save some time, you can use this edge finder. And the purpose of the edge finder is to find the center of the tool we're going to find, which is the same find as the center of the machine. So we're after trying to find the center of the, of the machine, and we're using this tool as an edge finder to do that. So I'm going to use this edge finder. I'm going to put it into the collet to save some time. You can do the same. But you can use either or. You can use the chuck, or you can use the collet. But by using the chuck, it saves you the process of having to remove the tool out. So we want to be using the spot drill after this, so that the chuck will hold the edge finder and the spot drill. So to install this, we can see in the height difference, we need to raise down the bed of the machine by a considerable amount. So just be careful, that lever can remove, and be careful when you're, when you're operating the knee dial. So you're rotating down, lowering the bed of the machine, so you can install in the chuck. And then you want to install in your chuck, in your chuck, again, press up, and the white button can solve, ensuring that the quill is always off. Now, it's always good practice to make sure you've got no burrs over the edge of the part here. And what we want to do is we want to drill a hole, referring back to our drawn, the location for that hole, and we can clearly see on our drawn, is in Eighteen millimeters from this edge that the valve enters in, from that edge of the part, it's in eighteen and into the center of the part. So, because we've lowered the position of the part to its maximum to its maximum diameter, the distance between here is the same as touching the outside edge of the part. So the location for that hole is halfway point between the diameter of the part and from this side in. It's in 18 millimeters, in on the X, and in the Y direction, it's the diameter divided by two. So if you take your vernier calipers out, and you measure, make sure you zero your vernier calipers, and then you measure the width between the jaws of the vise, it should be very close to 40, if not on 40. The line here is actually is measuring 39.9999, which is the same as, bang on, so halfway between that point giving us our white, white coordinates. So to use the edge finder, I want to remove off the burrs. So I'm going to take a file, and I'm just going to file off over the edge to make sure that when the edge finder hits, it's hitting the edge of the part. So now, to use the edge finder, you're flicking it on the center, you're winding in, and then raise up the bed of the machine, bring the tool closer to the part. Now, I'm going to use the quill to drop down and lock it. That's and 